Here's a sample application that explores some of the features of dependency injection within .NET Core. This is a sample that I lightly adapted from a sample that Microsoft has, has uh, made available. Okay, so I have this open in Visual Studio 2015, um, and that's because that was the version that it was built in. And I kind of know that it's, it's using the um, Visual Studio 2015 because I have the project.json file rather than all of the configuration stuff within MS Build within the project file. No matter, release version Visual Studio 2015 works just fine. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and run it to show you what the application does first. Okay, takes a little bit of time to start, but as you can see, there's a couple sections. One here will just display a page with various Star Wars character names. Okay, pretty simple. And then the other here is a page that you can use to explore the different lifetimes of dependency injection objects. Okay, so I'm first going to talk about the, the characters. Hopefully if you're a Star Wars fan, those are familiar names. But let's go in after the application stops. Come on, shut down. Should do that automatically, okay. And we'll go into the characters controller. So here's the index method. It's a regular MVC application. And what it does is this is the action method that's responsible for displaying the list of Star Wars characters. So it starts out by populating characters if none exists. This is just a, a way of initializing the application. And so it's going to use this character repository that I'm going to talk about in just a moment. And if there are any, if well, if, there, if it's an empty collection, then it's going to go ahead and add these new characters using this character class. Otherwise, if it's already populated, it'll skip that step, actually that, that if statement right there. And then it's just going to list all of the characters, return that, and use that as the model for the view. Now, what's interesting here is that although this application used Entity Framework Core and the Application DB context for its persistence, you wouldn't know that by looking at the controller. There's nothing here that identifies what is behind this character repository. So you kind of have to, at least at this point, take my word for it that it's using Entity Framework and that Application DB context. What the application has done is it's abstracted away the data access mechanism between an interface and name that interface iCharacterRepository. And that follows the repository pattern if you happen to be familiar with, with uh, software patterns like that. So the constructor essentially requests an instance of the iCharacterRepository, which assigns it then to a private field there. And then that's used to access the characters as necessary throughout the controller, including right there. So this is that pattern of having a, a field here that where you store a reference to an object that was injected into the class. And then that makes it available throughout the rest of the code, whatever code you're running within this, this controller. OK, and it's a very common way of using Entity Framework. Okay, so the character repository is going to have all of the features it needs in order to work with the characters. And again, this is somewhat unusual for a sample application. Well, unusual because it's a sample application. A real application, you're probably not going to initialize something like this. You'll be reading a database or, or things like that. Okay, so that's the entirety of that character's controller that generates that very simple page. Okay, next let's come into here, Models and look at the application DB context. So this code is pretty typical, albeit a very simple example, of an object context for Entity Framework Core. It's just a single collection property, characters, which is defined right there, and it uses this character object. OK, the rest of the code, pretty minimal Entity Framework, but we can go here and look at character, Go to the definition there. And as you can see, there is just a character property. Oops. OK, and as you can see, there's a couple of constructors. One takes a name to initialize the name property, 
and the other is a default constructor that doesn't take any any parameters and then it down here it just has a couple of properties an ID which is a GUID and a name okay so that's the character model that's used for the application